Hello YouTube, it is time to review Season 4, Episode 4 of Grimm, Dying on a Prayer. This is a perfect Grimm episode in terms of it has a monster of the day, it has the mystery that's going on, and the characters are all doing things. So everyone is active, everyone is up and at it. I love that about the episode. It's really fun. Uh, Adeline, this part was really, really, really short, and she's drowning. Or she drowned. Like, we don't even know if she's alive. I'm assuming that Adeline's alive. But that was her only part in the episode. So that was it. And she was way at the end because she's in these stairs and the little creepy guy who got her out of the cell told her don't talk or be quiet because they'll wake them. And it ends up being these faces on the walls and they start to cry because Adeline's crying because she can't find her baby. It ends up flooding the stairwell that she's in and then she can't get out. And that was pretty much how that ended with Adeline. So we don't know where that's going to be. A part of the episode I really liked was Elizabeth Monroe and Rosalie's them getting together and figuring out how to get Nick's powers back. I'm so happy that they're getting his powers back. I think I think it needs to be done ASAP because it, it's a storyline that can't be dragged out all season. So hopefully it'll be done by at least the mid-season finale, if not next week's episode, which from the preview, it looks like it'll be done. The Hex and Beast, or Elizabeth, who is a Hex and Beast, she Vogue for the first time. Creepy as anything. Like, it was so, really, so, I, I, I'm lost for words. Like, the way the characters are Vogue are all CGI 90% of the time. And this CGI effect on her was so creepy and, like, real looking to me i was really freaked out i guess the older a hex and beast gets the more disgusting they get and she looked really disgusting it was nasty so those three are working on getting his powers back towards the beginning of the episode then at the end of the episode they come back and they talk to nick saying you're not going to like how we have to get the final ingredient and they point to juliet and that goes to black so that was really them renard and Wu. they they're there renard's out of the hospital yay he's recovered and Wu is really concerned about trouble because he can't put the piece together because he's just not in the, the in crowd anymore. So he just doesn't know. Uh, that's good. I mean, I'm assuming at some point Wu will be informed and this will all blow over. Trubel tells Nick about um, the FBI thing. So that was good. That's making progress. Chavez wasn't in the episode, but now Nick's aware of what's going on. So it's another good thing. I mean, everything about this episode flowed really well. I actually didn't complain or had no real complaints about uh, the pacing or about the lack of character progression because every character that I wanted to see was there. Adeline's part was short, but I think it actually just served its purpose. Like it was really good and it makes you want to know like what's going to happen to her. Like I like I said, like I'm really, I was really invested in the whole episode. Very awesome. Very, really cool. I mean, I just said very like bad times and one sentence. Woohoo, that was, that's fun. The main mystery of the episode was dealing with two murders. And the murders weren't done by Besson. They were done by a golem who was resurrected through prayer. Now, in, I know they live in Portland, United States, probably 2014, probably early 2014. But it's a different world. It's not our world because magic or powers exist. So the prayer brought the golem to life. And that's what murdered the two Vessin, who happened to be the uncle or the step-uncle and the stepdad of this little boy who was threatened by those two men. And they also threatened his mother. And so the mother, her brother, prayed. And, you know, he was Jewish. He was a, he was a, um, a minister. He was a Jewish minister. And he prayed for this golem to protect them, and it came to life. He didn't even think it would happen, and it did, and it murdered the stepdad and the uncle. So they're both gone. And, you know, it was it was interesting because the murders were done kind of by accident because it wasn't actually done by a living being. It was done by a golem. So, like, no one got arrested. No one got in trouble. It was a really interesting take on Grin pulling religion into this, specifically the, the Judaic religion. So... I, I liked it. I thought it was interesting for them to go in that route. I'm curious if they'll go into any more religious events or religious um, beliefs to uh, throw into the show. I think that'll actually add up to making it more interesting. Uh, anyway, like I said, really liked the episode. Perfectly engaging. Perfectly paced. It was so well, well paced. And the end of it had a cool cliffhanger. Next week's episode looks pretty good because... I guess everyone knows now Nick is no longer a Grimm. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Let me know what you think is going to happen in the episodes to come. This episode, I don't know. I just loved it. I really, really liked it. It was different from Grimm, but it was perfect for Grimm. And it was also what Grimm is. So it's like everything in one. So Grimm writers, you guys did awesome. And I can't wait for more.
Goodbye, guys. Thank you for being all the way to the end of the video. Remember to click subscribe down there if you want to see more Grim reviews or reviews of other products such as Once Upon a Time and Blu-ray 